Welcome to Goldfish on Games, we're in the early days of computing. If you wanted to make a game, your choices were typically basic if you're a beginner, or assembly if you're a professional. So there was a gap in the market for something to sit in between. So enter the Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit. Here we have the Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit, also known by its initials, SUK. This is one of the many releases of the software for the Amiga as hinted by the huge sticker on the box, which was published by Outlaw and Palace and released in 1989, and was ported by a mix of IDS and Sensible Software, who made the original Siuk. Inside the box we get a set of adverts, as well as an addendum to a manual that I unfortunately don't have. Thankfully there are copies of it online, but for the most part it's quite intuitive to use the GUI interface but it would have been useful to have it as a reference. And finally we have two floppy disks that contain the editor as well as some sample games. Before we get going we need to make sure we have both a joystick and a mouse connected, as depending on the screen the software will require one, either or both of them to operate. And with those connected let's boot it up and see what we have. Now I think the best way to review software like this is to knock up a simple game. It shows off all the major features and gives you an idea of what to expect. But at the same time, this isn't a tutorial, so don't expect me to go into detail on every single option. This menu has everything we need to make a shooter, and we'll start with the first option, which is to work with the sprites. And selecting that item gives us more options, and if we select Edit Sprites, we get an image editor with the option of working with 8 colours, none of which are particularly great options. So let's exit this and edit the colours. The first colour is always going to be transparent, so I will use the convention of setting it to Magic Pink. The rest I will set to something that I think will give me more range, and with a better selection made, let's make a few sprites. And first off has to be the ship. It's a useful convention to start with slot 1 for your sprites, as we'll see later. Now the only real tool we have is the pen, which allows you to set the colour of one of the squares in this 24 by 24 grid. You can only have a single colour set, and as such, it will only use the left mouse button. If you want to erase, then you can use the undo, which will only go back once, or you can select the required colour from the palette and erase it. The flood button is quite dangerous, as it will replace the entire square with the selected colour and with the power of editing, the sprite is done. And it won't win any awards, but then again, I am definitely not an artist. There are 100 slots in total for sprites, or you can think of it as having 100 frames of animation. With a few tweaks to the sprite, we can actually make something that will look animated to some degree. And with that done, let's speed make a bullet for our ship, as well as an explosion. And with all those done, let's set up the player, which is done from the object menu. This menu allows us to edit all the main objects in the game, including the player, weapons and enemies and we can see why it's a good idea to leave sprite 0 empty, as that's the default sprite. So for player 1 we want to select the two frames of animation that we made, and if we set the last frame to be 1, we can see our animation in the corner of the screen. Next up is the fire, which has no animation, and the death, which has quite a few frames. And all are looking pretty decent. So with the player created, let's use the player limitations menu to configure it, which includes enabling it, as well as setting up some of the values, like its movement and its fire rate. We also need to edit the area the player can actually move around in, as well as where the player should start. And with all that in place we can now test out our game. And as we can see our ship moves around and shoots across the black void, which is cool, 
and it's not all that interesting, so let's create a background. Which we have a whole new set of menus with various options. And as backgrounds have their own 8 colours that are separate from the sprites, it includes another palette editor. The making of tiles is done via an almost identical editor to the sprites. And I'm going to make a few very ugly tiles which will include grass, water and some transition tiles. Which is all very easy now that we have some practice with the editor. With these made we can now place the tiles on our map, which we can see is now this grassy field as we made tile 0 the grass. The box under the cursor is also very unique, as the number at the top is the current selected tile, that little minus box selects the previous tile or block as they call it, and the plus selects the next block, so let's use this to place a small body of water. Let's make sure we have the transition block selected and lay it down. And now we can use the arrows on the box to move the whole map up and down, which allows us to place some water and more transition tiles. So let's now fly across this map. And oh, it just cuts off. What's wrong? Well, we need to update the start and end of the map, which is done via the map menu. And with that done, we can now see far more of the map that we just created. Now, what's the point of having all this firepower if we have nothing to shoot? So let's make a baddie, which means returning to the sprite editor and making something new. And as I find it easy to draw craft pointing up, I'll do that and then flip it afterwards. To continue the theme, we will also make another aircraft which will give another animating propeller. And we should also make another bullet, as well as an explosion that could be used across multiple craft if we want it. With that done, we have to return to the Edit Object screen to set up the basics which includes defining the sprites for the enemy fire and explosions, as well as the enemy itself. And with all the objects defined, we can now go to the Edit Enemy Bits, which allows us to join all the various parts together. This will be Enemy 1, which has sprites that we just set up, and we can see animating away. So let's set up some of its parameters, which includes how fast it moves, the direction and rate it shoots at, as well as the explosion and bullets that it will use. You can even set up what happens when it touches the player or one of their bullets. The next obvious step is to add the enemy to the game, which is done via the attack waves menu, and we want to insert a baddie. This gives us the option to select the enemy and then shows us the map and we can use the joystick to select roughly where we want the craft to be and then dial it in afterwards. And with the area of the map selected, we can then position the craft itself. The next step is to give the enemy a path to follow, which we draw by moving the craft with the joystick. And when we're happy, we press the left mouse button, and then we have to go back to the joystick to confirm. Boy, they really loved using both input methods at the same time. Now, if we wanted a wave, we could just place more craft and create more paths, but there are a limit to the number of paths that you can create, so instead we can join one enemy to another, which uses the exact same system as placing an enemy. The difference is that we select what we want to connect to, and once we've done that we can then apply an offset to the second craft, and we can actually do this with multiple craft in a row. So let's give this a quick go, and as we can see the bullets show up before we even spot the enemies but they are mostly moving in the path we set up. And with all that working, we actually have a limited shoot 'em up Now let's do something a little bit fancy and show you something special we can do with the sprites. And let's take our player sprite and copy it a few times and make some changes. 
The reason for this will be clear in just a second if my bad art skills doesn't give you a hint. And with those done we can then return to the object editor and select the player one object. And if we hit the animate button the animation frames changes to groups of two. So let's set up the sprites like this. Now if it's still not clear let's jump back in the game and as we can see, it makes it look as if the craft is banking when we move left and right. Now doing it this way limits us to just two frames of animation, but I think the trade-off is quite nice. With a masterpiece like this, I think we have to save it, which can be done to any standard Amiga formatted disc. And we can save it via the storage menu. And we will save it all and give it the name GFG. Now at this point the game is still only usable in the editor, but if you prepared the disc beforehand and open it via workbench you will find this icon, which if you rename it and give it the same name as the game it will actually result in a bootable game, as you can imagine many games were actually made with Shoot and shared and sold. Using the storage menu we can also check out the various sample games that they provided on the second disc. Each release typically had a different selection, though most of the time you would find Slap and Tickle as one of the options, as it seemed to be a bit of a favourite, as it even made it onto the box. Now all of these look and sound way more professional than my attempts. which gives us a chance to see the sound screen, which has a few options for you to tweak to apply various effects to the sound, but at its heart it's playing Amiga standard IFF samples. In seeing a few of these games it does help show the limitations of Suk, in that it's really for only top down shooters, so no side shooters or having multi directional scrolling. Though the biggest omission is there's no upgrade system, so that starting gun is all you've got through the entire game. Though you can do some interesting things like this large dragon which is made out of multiple enemies, or get quite creative as we can see with this sample from one of the other releases. This is a single screen shooter that limits the player into the box, but does give you directional shooting, and does have some fun things like sound effects. Now this might seem quite limited by today's standards, in the 80s this was very impressive and resulted in many public domain and cover disc releases over the years, simply due to how easy it was to use. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was Unlimited Shoot 'em Ups and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you had any experience with Suke back in the day, please leave me a comment down below as I'd love to hear about it. Else you could use your craft to shoot the like or subscribe button, or you could check out the two other videos that should be on the screen right now.